All right, guys. So I just want to quickly show you guys basically how I personally rig up for sturgeon fishing. I've had tons and tons of questions regarding this, even though I already made a video of how we do this last year. But it seems like there's a lot of people who are new to the channel, and I guess they're they missed that video. So I'm just gonna film another one for you guys. So keep in mind, this is basically how I do it. This is not the right way to do it. This is not the only way it's done. This is just personally how I do it. So that's just food for thought. I'm sure there's better rigs out there, but this is just how I do it. Quickly before we start, basically there's only two different rigs that I use when it comes to bank fishing for sturgeon. And in this video, I will show you both of them. Without further ado, I'm just, I'm just gonna show you guys basically the gear that you need uh, to be able to do this. All right, so this is basically everything that you need for how I am going to rig it. For the first method, this is all you need. For the second method, that's all you need. So I'm just gonna go through it. So this is just some cheap line, and this is 40 pound monofilament. And this is my main line, which I have spooled right there. 25 pound line is for your weight. And then this is 130 pound braid for your hook. And for weights, this is essentially the three types of weights that we use. This is called a bank sinker, and this is probably our number one weight that we always use. If the water conditions are good, this is the, the type of weight that we will always use, a bank sinker. When there's a little bit more current, we'll switch it up to a pyramid weight because this thing catches uh, the rocks on the bottom a lot better than a bank sinker weight. And so you guys can see six, but I just grabbed a six, but usually it's always eight. It's eight. We use a six when the water conditions are really, really low and there's basically a really, really weak current or there's no current at all. So keep in mind, this says six, but all our weights are eight, eight, eight ounces. Then we go on to this thing. This is just the eight ounce weight, but this thing has wires. And what you can do with this is you can bend these hooks out like this. And when you're able to bend these hooks out like this, this will definitely catch the bottom a lot better. The, the time that we use these types of weights is when the current is super, super fast and neither a bank sinker weight or pyramid weight is willing to stick to the bottom. This is usually our last resort and this thing usually never fails us even though the current might be a little crazy. So with that being said, we have three types of weights that we usually use. Bank sinker weight, pyramid weight, or a weight with uh, wire claws. And then uh, we'll move over to our next important thing. This is a swivel, and you can use almost any swivel you can find. These are very cheap swivels. And I mean, as long as it's like, a, if it can hold like 100 pounds, um, you're more than ready to go considering that your main line is only 40 pounds or, or 50 or 30 depending on what you use. And then next is a slider, and this will be used for our second method that I will be showing you guys today. And then this is just a magic thread uh, to tie in your bait. Next is our hook, and this is a 7 aught Gamagatsu Octopus Barbless Hook. 7 aught is typically what everybody in my family uses, and it's basically the ideal hook. Again, this is just what we use. You use what you are comfortable with. If you feel like 7 aught is too small, you can use what like 8 aught, 9 aught, whatever you want. If you feel like 7 aught is too big, just change it up to like 6 aught, 5 aught, or whatever you're comfortable with. Um, for my rod, um, this is a brand new rod that I need to go break in. And so this is the Ugly Stick Big Water Rod. It is a 12 foot extra heavy. Uh, holds 25 to 50 pound line and it can hold a 6 to 12 ounce lure and then I have it paired with the Shimano Torium and again, I have 40 pound line spooled onto here So before we go any further I just want to show you guys basically the knot I tie for everything that I use on my sturgeon rig and Some of you guys might know this so if you want to skip to the next part you guys can skip it But the knot that I usually tie for everything on my sturgeon rig is called the uni knot and uh, for you guys to be able to see better, I just took this, you know, big, thick line. And I just want you guys to imagine that this is the eye of the hook. You take your tag end, go through the eye of the hook, and you make a U. This is your main line, and this is your tag end. You want to pull it up, and then you want to take your tag end and go back down like this. 
So now you have an S. Your tag end goes like this. You want to grab these two lines right here together. And you want to take your tag end and go right over the two lines like that. And now all you're going to do is you're just going to take this tag end and go under these two lines right here and just basically wrap these two lines about four or five times. So since this is bigger line, it's harder to wrap around four or five times. So I'm just going to show you guys three times. So you take this tag end, you're going to go under like that. That's, that's under and you're going to wrap it around again and poke it back out through the eye. Actually, I'm just going to show you guys two times because uh, this is a little too thick. So what you want to do now, you just hold your hook and just pull it together. And so before you tighten it completely, you want to wet this. So usually I just uh, lick it or just put it in my mouth and just uh, make sure that you get a lube and just get it wet. That way the knot can be used uh, to its most effective potential. So now what you want to do is you just take your hook, your eye of the hook, and your tag end and your main line, and you just want to cinch it up. All right, so take your tag end, just pull it tight, make sure it cinches uh, tight onto the main line. Now you just want to take the hook and your main line and just pull it. And then you just want to make sure that you know you you tie on this thing very very good. And so again, I only wrapped it twice, but the number of loops sh that is shown here should be the number of times that you looped around uh, your main line. So here I looped around twice, so there's two two rolls right here. If you wrapped it three times, there will be three rolls, four, four rolls, etc., etc. So that is essentially the uni knot, and that's usually what I use um, for my whole entire sturgeon rig. So when I say uni knot, just refer back to this. Um, I'm sure there's better tutorials out there that you guys can go learn if this didn't teach you guys anything. This first rig that I'm about to show you guys is basically the rig that I will use majority of the time. So this green line right here is my main line. All right, This is the main line. This neon green line is your main line. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your swivel. So here's your swivel. So you take your swivel and you're just going to tie a uni knot to one eye of the swivel. So I have it looped through so you guys can see, I have it looped through one eye of the swivel. And now what you want to do now is simply tie a uni knot. And five times. Now you want to, what you want to do, so we're just going to loop it through. We're going to loop it. We're going to wet it. If it's wet, pull the tag in. Make sure it's tight. You guys can see, that's what it should look like when it's not fully cinched. This is about how it should look like before you completely uh, cinch it up. Just hold the main line in your swivel and just pull your main line. Just make sure it's very, very snug. So there it is. My first uni knot is tied on to one eye of the swivel. So now that you have your uni knot tied there, you just want to cut this tag end uh, and leave about, I don't know, between a quarter inch to half an inch. So we're just going to cut the tag end. So you guys can see I cut the tag end and now we have the swivel tied onto our main line. Alright, so now that we have our swivel tied onto our main line, the next step is to tie on the hook. You could use a tri-swivel, another eye that sticks out right here, but you don't have to. We usually just use a double eye swivel. So to tie on the hook, you're going to use the 130 pound braid that I showed you guys at the beginning. Your hook leader is going to tie back into the same eye that your main line is tied onto. So this is where your hook will be going to. This eye over here is where your weight will be tied to. So all we're going to do, we're going to tie a uni knot onto this hook and then we're just going to tie that another uni knot onto the eye of the swivel right here. So we'll take some Dacron 130 pound braid and the, the trick with this rig right here, so the trick with this rig right here is you want your hook to be tied as close as you can to the swivel. And so for this part, we're just going to take your 130 pound braid, your Dacron line, through the eye of the hook, and once again, we're going to tie a uni knot. For the hook, I usually only tie, or I only do three loops with the uni knot. So again, just going to cinch it up, 
now we're gonna lube it we got it lube now we're just gonna pull the main line and the hook make sure it's tight there you go you need not tie it onto the hook and so once again you guys see how the tag end is kinda long once again you're gonna cut the tag end and leave about a quarter inch to half an inch and there you go we just cut the tag end off so here's our hook right here we're gonna take the other end of the hook of this Dacron now we're gonna go through the eye of the swivel that our main line is tied onto and here we're just gonna tie uni knot and ju we're just gonna try to tie the uni knot and make the hook as close as we can to the swivel so this might be the trickiest part of this rig but again if you have it a little too long oh well um, that's fine so here again we're just gonna tie a uni knot this is pretty tricky with the uni knot so for this tutorial I, I'm not gonna try to get it too perfect because I think you guys kinda get the idea so you guys see how short my leader for my hook is so usually the leader for my hook is about half this length right here but simply just because this is a tutorial um, I don't want to go through all the trial and error so one thing that you can do is just pre-tie a bunch of hooks and swivels uh, before you leave the house so even so with this size right here um, it's not too bad so about right here this is a probably a good three between three and four inches alright so just to quickly recap on one eye of the swivel we have our main line and we have our hook line tied onto there here's a uni knot this is a uni knot and here's a uni knot and then we're just gonna move on to the next step which is tying on our weight and our weight will be tied onto this other swivel eye that has not been utilized so for our weight we use 8 ounce weights and what we have found is that 25 pound mono is basically the most effective line to tie that weight onto your swivel with so um, again this is not the right way to do it you can use 20 pounds if you're comfortable with that you can use 30 pounds if you feel like 25 pounds is too small again this is just how we do it and you just gotta use what you feel comfortable with usually what I like to start out with when we go on any fishing trip is I like to have about a 15 to 16 inch leer for my weight so we're just gonna cut off about 20 inches of this line simply because when you tie knots you lose a little bit of line length so we're just gonna cut off about 20 inches of line again for the weights we have three kinds of weights but let's say that we are on a usual sturgeon fishing trip so you know I will always pick up this bank weight right here if this weight does not stay we'll move over to this one before this tutorial we'll just stick with this weight right here so again for this weight it's no different you're just gonna tie a uni knot with your 25 pound mono line or whatever line you choose so we're gonna tie a uni knot I do five or six loops so now we have a uni knot, uni knot tied onto a weight and we'll cut this tag in after I tie on the weight to our swivel so now again you guys can see we have our hook and our main line tied on this side we're gonna take our weight line and tie it to this empty eye over here and once again you're just gonna tie a uni knot so for the first rig this is it so just to recap this is your main line you tied a uni knot onto one eye of the swivel we took our 130 pound braid tied a uni knot onto the same eye as the line and we tried to keep this leader as short as possible and we tied a uni knot onto a 7 7 aught barbless gamagatsu octopus hook and then on this other eye of the swivel we have about a about a 16 inch leader and on the other end we have an 8 ounce bank weight that's also tied with a uni knot and so with that um, now I'm gonna go into the basically the last part of this rig which is tying on the bait alright so for bait one of the most common baits that we use is basically cut up fish we're just gonna pretend that this little piece of paper towel is a piece of cut bait so imagine this is like the just a piece of blue yellow and normally this is the size that we use when it comes to cut bait so it's about I don't know about an inch one and a half inches to two inches tall and it's about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick so we're just gonna imagine that this is our bait so what we typically do is we try to put our bait onto the shank of the hook so we'll just poke it in one side through one one end and we'll just about hook it up just something like this so let's just imagine that this is 
a fish and you know it's kind of falling apart just like this piece of um, paper towel is and so what you want to do now you're gonna go and you're gonna take this magic thread and you're just gonna wrap it around your bait as many times as you need to to ensure that your bait does not fall apart so we're just gonna wrap it around oh I don't know a lot a bunch of times like this All right, so after you have your bait wrapped up a bunch of times, all you want to do now is just tie this magic thread. So we're just going to go through like this. Tie one loop there. Just tie another loop here. Tie another loop. All right, so here, basically all we have done is we just took a bunch of magic thread and wrapped this little piece of bait around. So basically the purpose of that is to make sure that the bait doesn't start basically breaking apart and slowly dissolving in the water. Now that we have that, the last part for this rig is to secure the bait so that the bait does not slide off the hook. So even though you have the bait secured and it won't break off, this bait right here can still slide off the hook. So the last part is you want to tie this bait onto the hook and make sure that this will not be able to move at all. And so how we're going to do that is we're just going to go back to our 25 pound line. So here's our 25 pound line. And you are just going to wrap, I don't know, cut off maybe about 8 inches of line, if even. I like to work with extra line because it doesn't hurt to have too much line, but it does hurt to have not enough line. So what you want to do with this line right here, so what you want to do is you want to go take one tag in of the new line and go through the eye of the hook. You see, I went through the eye of the hook. And now what you want to do is you simply want to tie a double or triple knot while keeping the two, the two tag ends as even as possible. So here's something really important to know. When you are tying your double knot with this line right here, you, may, you want to make sure that you, when you cinch the knot, it stays clear of this line up here. Because you guys can see, if I cinch this down, I'm going to cinch both this uh, braided line together. So I want to make sure that it comes over and it's clean, and then I'll cinch it. So you guys can see, I tied a double knot onto the eye of the hook, and I did not tie it over this uh, braided line over here so that's what you want to do that's just the heads up for you guys because I have made the mistake of tying this double knot over my braided line so my braided line will be like this and when the fish starts pulling line on line cuts each other like butter moving forward we have our double knot tied right there and for this upper part of this bait you guys can see how it's like this for about the top third you just want to wrap your line around it and uh, just tie it together so one method of doing this is you just want to take one tag in and you're just going to loop this top third part like three times or so. And then you're going to do the same with this other end, wrap around three times or so. And then you're going to take both the tag ends and you're going to go back through the eye of the hook. So we take both of these tag ends. So we took the after wrapping it around this bait right here, we just took the two tag ends and we went back through the eye of the hook. And now this part, you want to cinch it up. All right, so now that we have the two tag ends looped through, um, you're just going to want to take another, just one of the tag ends and just loop it back through the eye of the hook. And now you just want to take the two tag ends and just tie a double knot. So now that we have the two tag ends tied with another double knot, we're just going to cut the two tag ends. Alright, so I don't know if I did a good job of explaining that, but basically you put the bait on and you're just going to wrap it around with a bunch of magic thread to hold the bait in, to make sure that the bait doesn't break apart in the water. And then you're going to take a 25 pound line or whatever line you're comfortable with and you're just going to tie the top third and wrap it around a bunch of times and then you're just going to eventually tie it to the eye of the hook. You can do that any method, any way you want as long as you can hold it in place because now the bait, it's, it's held onto place. You know, I, I can't push it down. And so even if a fish comes and he slurps it up, even if I, I miss the hook set, I know that for a fact my bait is on the hook and the fish didn't get lucky and just steal my bait. So ultimately that's the first rig. So that's complete. So again, we have our swivel and in I1, we have our main line right there. And we also have our leader line for our hook. 
and again this line right here you want to keep as short as possible tire bait put magic thread around it and then tie it with 25 pound line to the eye of the hook so that it doesn't fall off and then the second eye of the swivel is just our 25 pound leader line that goes to our weight so here's our rig main line there's our hook and then over here is our weight so when you cast, essentially your weight's gonna be down here and your your bait is kind of flowing up high in the water like this. So this is how it should look like. And this is the probably the number one rig that we use. And majority of the fish that you guys see us catch is off of this rig right here. I don't know what's called, but it's a very simple rig and there's no need to overcomplicate this rig. This is just what it is and that's usually what we catch. A lot of the fish you guys see us catch is off of this rig right here. That being said, we're just going to quickly move and I'm just going to show you guys a second method that we usually resort to if the place we fish is too snaggy, which means that we lose too much of our weight. So for this next rig, since you guys already know how I kind of do things, I'm just going to fly through this rig. So this is called the slider rig, or this is at least what we call the slider rig. And what you need is you need a slider and so what this slider is is basically the line this red thing is hollow so I can put the line through like that so usually with the slider there's two ends there's a short end right here and there's a long end usually I put the tag end and I go through I go through the short end and I will go out the long end you essentially just let the slider slide up and down your main line so we're just gonna put that aside for now and from the last rig, you guys can see, now all I have is I just have the hook tied on to one eye of the swivel. So I took off both the main line and the, the, weight, the weight leader from this eye of the swivel. Unlike our other rig, we are now going to tie the hook to one eye of the swivel and on the other eye, we're gonna tie our main line. So on this line over here, we're gonna tie our main line. So we're just gonna tie uni knot once again. And keep in mind that our slider is now in our main line. It has slid up the line. All right, so here you guys have it. Here's our bait over here. Same exact thing as the other rig. Now we have our leader tied onto one eye of the swivel and we have our main line with this slider just sliding up and down. And now what you wanna do is you simply tie your weight leader onto this little piece right here. So here's our weight and here's the line right here and we're just gonna tie uni knot right here. All right, so here's the rig. We have our hook over here with our bait tied on. We have our leader to our hook, and again, it's a 130 pound braid, and you keep it as short as possible. With this rig, you again, this size is perfect because you don't want it too close to the leader, I mean, to the swivel. So this is good for this, this rig right here. This is like ideal. With the other rig, you want it a little bit shorter than this, but for this slider rig, this is okay. And now we have our slider, and our slider is tied onto this hook. So basically the weight is tied onto this little slider right here. So you guys can see my slider can move back and forth. So the advantage of using this, this setup right here versus our first one is that even if your weight gets snagged, even if the weight is snagged, you can still fight the fish. And usually what happens is when you fight the fish like this, eventually there's gonna be so much tension between you and the fish that this weight is just gonna break off. So Let's imagine now the weight's broken off and now you just have a direct fight with the fish and the hook right here. So, we usually use this rig when we fish a spot where it's really snaggy and you get snagged a lot. So, that would be basically the, the advantage of using this slider rig versus our first rig. The good thing about the first rig is if the weight doesn't get stuck and you pull in the fish in, the weight will always move consistently so if you pull in the fish 20 yards the the weight's also going to come in 20 yards let's say that this this weight is stuck at point a and this fish is all the way at point b but let's say point a to point b is about 50 yards so even if the fish you're pulling the fish from point b in you have to come all the way into 50 yards to get the weight to start moving again as well so essentially the weight and the swivel have to meet each other for the weight to move that's the downfall of it because sometimes there is cir circumstances where you, you want everything to move simultaneously. If the fish is moving, you want the weight to move as well. With the slider rig, if the weight and the swivel do not touch, 
only the fish and the hook are moving and the weight is just stationary so there's a lot more to say but that's essentially the two rigs that we use for our sturgeon fishing for bank fishing keep in mind bank fishing um, again this is not the right way to do it this is not the only way to do it this is just how I do it I'm just doing this video to basically help you guys understand how I'm rigging my setup and stuff like that so so yeah if you guys still have questions about anything about these rigs um, feel free to let me know in the comment section so this video was basically focused on terminal tackle like just how you tie your rigs and stuff there will be another video that will show you guys basically more non-terminal stuff in terms of what to look for so the second part of these this instructional series will teach you guys more about observing observing the habitat and stuff like that and where you should cast and so what bait you guys should use this first instructional video for this year is just showing you guys the terminal tackle so if you guys are interested in learning more about how my thought process works when it comes to bank fishing for sturgeon I hope you guys subscribe and stay tuned T click on the bell to turn on notifications when I upload the video so that that way you guys won't miss me uploading that next instructional video with that being said I hope you guys enjoy this video I hope you guys learned something uh, feel free to leave questions feedback I read everything um, with that being said, I hope you guys stay tuned for the next video and thanks for watching guys.